While the rift between China and Japan over the Daoyu Islands has blanketed media coverage in both countries, tensions are also rising on the other side of the world between Israel and Iran. Now, the rift there is not about territorial sovereignty, and the likelihood of war is taken very seriously. Israel has accused Iran of developing nuclear weapons under the guise of a civilian nuclear energy project for years. Now, many fear that Iran is close to developing a nuclear warhead that is capable of reaching Israel. On the other hand, many in Israel have said that it may attack Iran's nuclear sites with or without help from its ally, the United States. Now, in Washington, the Obama administration has been calling for negotiations with Tehran to allow inspectors to confirm the country's civilian nuclear power claim. The U.S. has also stated that it will protect Israel in a possible confrontation between Jerusalem and Tehran. But despite many anti-Iranian sentiments in the American public, the U.S. played host to hundreds of world leaders for the United Nations Assembly, including the Iranian president. Now, the Iranian president is no stranger to New York City. He has spoken at the U.N. Assembly on numerous times. He has spoken at the U.N. Assembly on numerous occasions. In his latest trip to the Big Apple, the Iranian leader was once again met with dozens of protesters. Many Weibo users have been commenting on the Iranian president's trip to New York. Let's take a look at what they have to say. The U.S. is unhappy because Ahmadinejad is anti-American, but he was freely elected. What is more depressing for the U.S. is that Ahmadinejad's opposition in Iran is even more anti-American. Stupid Americans! He went to participate in the United Nations Assembly, not to run for election. New York has 20 kilometers of special United Nations zone. It's not in a hotel in Washington, D.C. Why would you ask him to leave New York? It reminds me of one year the U.S. refused entry to Gaddafi and forced the U.N. General Assembly session to take place in Geneva. This is the charm of the United States. A dictator can go in and out of New York and express his views. It doesn't really matter that there are over 50 people protesting. Small-scale protests like the one against the Iranian president are a common sight in big cities like New York. Now, as the host of the United Nations, New York has the responsibility of keeping foreign dignitaries safe. It is also the same police force that works to protect the safety of protesters as well. Now, economic sanctions on Iran has been in place for decades, but recently, Tougher sanctions have been imposed by the U.S. and the E.U. because of Iran's continued development of its vague nuclear program. Oil exports have been cut, inflation is high, and the average citizens in Iran are feeling the heat of the new sanctions. But Tehran is not backing down. It has said time and again that it will continue to pursue its civilian nuclear program. Meanwhile, in Israel, some analysts have claimed that Jerusalem will not wait for U.S. support to launch an attack on Iran's nuclear development sites. Will further sanctions against Iran force them back to the negotiating table? Or will Iran continue its course and forbid nuclear watchdogs to investigate its nuclear program? Will Israel truly attack Iran? What role will the United States play on this delicate diplomatic situation? Now, whether or not you agree with Iran's nuclear ambitions or Israel's stance on self-defense, it is important that the United Nations play a role in keeping peace in the region. And hopefully, cooler heads from both nations will prevail and calm will be restored in the region.